one of the things I try to teach people all the time is treat whatever you're going through as the stage on which God is working and listen to whatever he speaks to you about because that will tell you what he's doing on that stage. So in my life over this past year, we have gone through one of the most intense periods of grief because uh, a bunch of people who had been family to us just decided to walk out of our lives and leave us alone. And at the same time, uh, we have a family member who's been dying of cancer. So this Monday night, my wife's twin brother passed away of cancer. It was sudden in relation to how we thought he was doing. And we are now facing grief upon grief, you could say. And so as I come to God's word this morning, listen to what he speaks into this stage that this week a loved one has passed away and we're so aware that people who used to be in our lives to support and comfort aren't here anymore and what does God tell us listen to this for the love of Christ controls us because we have concluded this that one has died for all therefore all have died and he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. That's what God wanted to speak onto my stage this morning. He wanted to speak about the significance of how we live in relation to death. The key thing here is he's saying the love of Christ controls us. And then he says, why? It's because Christ died for us. We have been crucified with Christ. We no longer live, but Christ lives in us. And so we live to the glory of God. So we are living for the sake of the one who died and was raised. We're living for him because we have died to the world, the flesh, and the devil. What God spoke to me about yesterday morning was equally amazing to this, and it actually helps me see how the props are set for today. Paul had said, For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. What he was saying was, he was so grieved by the way this church was falling away from their sincere and pure devotion to Christ that it was tearing him up inside. But love compelled him to make sure that the things that were overwhelming to him, he would not speak them to you. He would not speak them to the church. He'd speak them to God. And when he spoke to the church, he would speak what he was in control of. And that's why he would say, for the love of Christ controls us. It's love that takes some things to God because he's the only one who can bear them. And it's love that chooses carefully what we share with others so that it will build them up and not discourage them or tear them down. In Psalm 73, a man named Asaph is going through a difficult time where he's envying the wicked because they seem to prosper while the righteous always seem to suffer. And he talks about how he was so overwhelmed with this. And he said, if I would have spoken what I was feeling right then and there, I would have betrayed this whole generation. He was a worship leader. If he had told everyone what he was struggling with, he would have betrayed them because he would have caused, pe caused people to stumble. But instead, he took it to God and he went into the sanctuary and got alone with God and told God what only God could handle. And God changed his mind and he showed him the end of the wicked and that the way uh, of the righteous is blessed by God. And it transformed him. But the point is, he wouldn't tell everybody what he was going through because love compelled him to keep some things only for him and God. And then he wrote this beautiful psalm 
that is so encouraging to everybody who struggles with these things because it shows the whole story. It shows a man who struggled, but look at how he came to God with it. Look at how he came to love God. And so Paul is saying the same thing. He's overwhelmed with grief at how these people are falling away from Christ. But there's some of it he will only tell to God and other parts he will tell them because love directs him in what to say. I'm sharing this because you have your own stage on which God is working. You have your own story. You have your own props. There's a script that God's already written for you. And God, if you read his word, he will tell you what he's doing. And if you listen to it and you take it to heart, some people argue against it. They say, well, that couldn't be what God's doing. Look at what I'm going through. It's like, no, that's absolutely backwards. If what you're going through has you at a certain place in God's word and you can hear what God's saying to you, then combine it, bring it together. You're on this stage, God's giving you the script. Listen to him, join him in that work that he's doing. And so I leave with this with you. The love of Christ, even in grieving the death of a loved one, even in, in grieving the death of relationships where people just walk away, we can still be under the love of Christ that compels us to bring to God what only God can bear. And then to bring to people, even in our grief, what love compels us to do to seek God's best in their lives. And if we will join God in that work, whatever he shows us each day, we will experience God in the ways God wants us to know him. And we will look back on these hard times and we will be so thankful that God met us on that stage and then worked all things together for our good.